Mano and Lele, um, Coconut Fam. We're here with a special guest today, Dalakai, all the way from the US. And um, if, in case you missed it, he actually made it through the blind auditions of The Voice. And we're super excited to um, get to talk to him today. Um, how are you, Dalakai? I'm good, Malo Lele. How are you? Good. Um, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your Pacific heritage and where you grew up? Yeah, um, so I'm born and raised in Sacramento, California. Uh, my mom, she's Tongan, Samoan, and got like a lot of other mixtures in there. Um, so super Islander. And then my my dad, he's uh, he's black. And um, so let's see. I used it's funny because I used to speak the language like fluently when I was a kid, and then I went into foster care, and I kind of like lost my heritage because I wasn't able to talk to anybody um, that knew the language. So. Yeah, that's a little background about about me and my heritage. <laughs> and, and so, whereabouts did you grow up? Mostly in the states. Um, Sacramento. So it's a little town in California, and yeah. Um, and so, what what do you do besides um, sing? Yeah, so right now I'm I'm actually working at a restaurant as well. Uh, so I'm focusing on making uh, music like my full time job. Uh, but for the meantime, you know, bills got to get paid. So my other <laughs> my other side gig is going to be, uh, you know, just waiting tables. And where did you get your start in singing, like um, musically and in terms of um, wanting to perform and things like that? Yeah, so my start in music. So I used to listen to Usher all the time in the, on the radio. And uh, I always tried to just mimic his voice. And I just fell in love with music just by trying to sound uh, like as as much as I can close to you know like a what you hear on the radio and I just fell in love with uh, writing when I was in high school and that's how I got my start in music and then I just pursued it ever since. Awesome and so um have you performed like besides going on The Voice um mm -hmm. were people able to see you before or was this like your first time getting out uh, putting yourself out there? So it's, it's funny because I used to do shows like when I was in my early 20s and stuff, I used to do shows around and then I kind of like put music on the backside for a moment so I could focus on just working and taking care of family. And so the last time I was really on stage was like, I'd have to say like 2019. And then um, The Voice, for me to, to get, back, get on The Voice, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to be able to get back on stage and get some coaching and you know advice from the coaches and just try to become a better performer so yeah and so you mentioned um, Asha being a favorite singer did you have anyone else who was who was like a musical inspiration for you oh yeah um people like so definitely John Legend a um, little bit of Bob Marley Lauren Hill um you know some some reggae roots in there too and then uh, I listen to people like Common Kings as well. And yeah, just, I'm just heavily influenced like by overall, like um, good R&B, feel good music. So yeah. So what is the whole process like to even get onto the vo voice? What, did you have to audition first or um, was it just like you send in your audition tape and then they call you to come in type thing? Yeah, pretty much where I sent. So it's funny because I did this, uh, I tried back in, I want to say 2015, I tried where I went to in person and I kind of got next to like, uh, so I got um, in front of executive producers where I got to sing in front of them and then I didn't get a call back at that point. And then I tried again in 2019 and I didn't get a call back. And then I decided, let me go ahead and try again by, by sending in a tape. So I sent in a tape and then I got a call back and uh, I was able to, to go to L.A. and audition um, in front of all the, the coaches. And it's like been one of the most amazing like experiences that I've ever even could imagine being on. So, yeah. Yeah, and it was um, really awesome to see how um, I think at the beginning when you were talking about um, how you've also been mistaken for John Legend as you were growing up. Um, as like a um, yeah. his doppelganger type thing. How was that like even um, getting on stage to performing and then him being the first to turn for you? Yeah, so it's crazy. So when I went on stage, I was like, well, before before going on stage, I was like, this this should be easy because they're not looking at me at all. You know, all their backs are turned. 
And then I get on stage and then the, the nerves start rushing in and I'm like, I had to like catch my breath and everything and collect myself. And when I started singing and then I first saw John turn around, I was like, wow. First of all, I was like, okay, now I see what they're talking about. He does kind of look like, he does look like me. Like I was like looking at him and I was like, he looks like he could be my brother. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, it was crazy. Cause when I first saw him, I started freaking out in my mind. I just was like, I got to get through this song. And before you know it, it was over. Like, I feel like I kind of like blacked out <laughs> in a way. And I, I feel like that's like a lot of the people who go on stage, they kind of like black out and like, what just happened, you know? So yeah, I, I'm so happy that I even got him to turn his chair, you know? Yeah. And so um, before you go on, like, do you have an idea of, um, say, all everybody turns for you? Like, do you have in your mind who you want to pick type thing? It's funny because if all of them turn around, I, I think I would have gave every single person like a, um, you know, a fair shot by listening out to what they have to say. Um, I think because John turned around first, I was like, OK, so he turned around first. And then on top of that, like I have this back history of, you know, getting compared to him. And also I just love his music and then just respect him as an artist and just admire just all of his accomplishments and all of that. So that, that was an another reason why I was like, I was like, I gotta go with John. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so when do the battles happen? Because is it next up, the battles for you? Yeah, so next up is the battles and you'll just have to stay tuned in to, to find out what happens. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. And um, oh, because we're in New Zealand, mm -hmm. will, will, will that be tomorrow night for you guys or? Um, that's a good question. So right now it's Saturday, so it comes on on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, Monday is going to be the last uh, blind audition. And then Tuesday is going to be the when the battles first begin. So yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So in between making it through to um, John Legend's team and mm -hmm. so now while you've been preparing for um, the battles, uh, what have you been up to? It seems like you've been really busy with interviews and all sorts of yeah. things. So I've been um, just focusing on writing music and been in the studio. I got some music that I'm going to release coming up. And then uh, other than that, I just been doing the interviews and just trying to network as much as possible and then work in between and then taking care of family. So I got my hands full, but it's all worth it. And so do you have to do like a lot of rehearsals for the um, battles? Do you know what song you're going to sing? Yes. I'm excited to see uh, how everything turns out and then also to see all of my friends that I made on the show, how to see how their battles went and everything. So I'm just excited. And so with you being um, in John Legend's team, you have to go against each other in the battles, is that right? Yes. Yep. Does that make it harder? It kind of, well, at first it's kind of like intimidating if you see their like, after, especially after seeing their like blind audition but i feel like once you practice with your partner and you know overall you get a good feel and everything i feel like you develop this friendship after you know just being around that person you know the longest and i feel like it's it's like at the end of it seeing it all come together it kind of gets like emotional because you're like you put all this hard work into it and it's like you you just lay it out all on the stage so it's it's a beautiful like just team collaboration so yeah Awesome. Yeah, we're really looking forward to um, seeing more of you, um, especially you. after we saw like Ian Tongi get through on American Idol and then now we've got like another Samoan Tongan on The Voice. So yeah, it's really exciting for um, I think the Pacific Island community around the world for, um, for you to be in it. Um, so we just want to wish you the best and we can't wait to um, see you get in there with the battles. Thank you. I want to come out there too. Like I really want to come out there and then just like be around the culture and then just experience what it's like to be on the islands and all. Yeah, I really want to come out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have you. Um, oh, just just going back to what you were saying, um, how you kind of lost contact with your culture for a bit. Um, have you been able to reconnect yep. with it um, since since you were younger? Yes. So I've reconnected with some of my family. I'm still trying to learn how to speak the language, though. Like. I could understand some words, but I like, like I said, like, cause I wasn't talking to people on the normal basis. Uh, I, I dropped it on accident and, you know, just like being, being young, 
and just not being able to, you know, use the language that you were taught, it kind of like fades away after a while. The foster care system, they like, I feel like the foster care system needs some representation for like more cultures. I feel like, you know, being, having some more representation as far as like having uh, interpreters and, and just, uh, you know, helping on that aspect. I feel like that needs to like improve in the future, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, and so with the, uh, you were saying that Common Kings was one of, um, yes. one of your, yeah. Um, are there any other Pacific Island artists that, um, that you mm -hmm. love or enjoy listening to? Fiji, Ikolu, um, let's see, Dinah Jane, like, let's see. It's crazy because I was actually, uh, so I actually tried out for X Factor in 2012 and Dinah Jane was on there and that's when I first met her. And uh, I was actually on that show too, but then my audition didn't get aired. Uh, so yeah, there's so many just like talented, poly we have so much talent in the Polynesian community. It's so beautiful, like it's, it's amazing so, for sure. Like when I met some people uh, there at the blind, uh, auditions they were like when they found out that I was Polynesian they were like oh I know you could sing then <laughs> they're like I know you could sing then I was like yeah I guess I guess you could say that <laughs> <laughs> and is there anyone you would um love to collab with in future oh man I would love to collab with with Fiji he's a he's a true legend for sure um Common Kings like come on now I would love to, to collab with them um, and then just like any other up and coming like Polynesian artist that that really has that special gift, I would love to collaborate with uh, up and coming as well. So yeah. And in terms of food, do you have any favorite island food? Ooh, lupulu. <laughs> or some otai. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, thanks so much for um, for taking the time to um, talk to us, and wish you all the best for um, the battles. 